Here we are at Afterlife Studios in Vancouver. Uh, making our fourth full-length album, Scream, Holler and Howl, with Eric Nielsen at the helm. Twisting the knobs, twisting our minds. I'm uh, Eric Nielsen. I'm producer, engineer at Afterlife Studios, which is where we are. Uh, working on the new Blue Moon Marquee record. Been uh, 11 days so far. Tomorrow's our last day, day 12. And then I start mixing. Yeah, it's been a lovely experience. A lot of live off the floor music and, you know, recording to tape, kind of vintage sounds, that whole thing. And uh, we're all very happy and excited for the final product. Like water on the ground, tell there's nothing left to bleed. It's the first time we've ever had a co-producer come on board with us. And that kind of thing can be tricky, but it is it is just it's been a ball. It's been amazing having a uh, living legend, Duke Robillard. Here he is, coming oh. down the stairs. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. Am I interrupting an interview thing? I, no. <laughs> no, no, no. It's yeah. It was actually perfect timing. Perfect timing to get. Initially, uh, we were talking to Holger Peterson, another living legend in the music scene, a Canadian CBC icon, long time. A uh, longtime host of the CBC Saturday Night Blues. And uh, we'd mentioned, yeah, we're interested in working with somebody. And Duke's name came up, and he's made records with Duke. And he's like, oh, that's a fantastic idea. I'm going to talk, talk to him about that. They were on Holger Peterson's radio show. And uh, somehow the subject came up of. Um, of me, maybe, you know, would be a cool idea if I worked with them on production and as a guest on, on this recording. And uh, I've been with Stony Plain for over 20 years now. I've got, actually, I'm on, oh, God knows, 30 or 40 of their albums, you know, on that label's album uh, albums. And, and I've got over 20 of my own on Stony Plain. So, um, you know, Holger and I are close, and he's a big fan of, of Blue Moon Marquee. So, uh, I can't, I really don't know who came up with the idea, but anyway, they talked about it, and then uh, Holger asked me if I was interested in possibly working with them. So, uh, I got to hear their music. They sent me a few of their CDs, and uh, I really liked what I heard. And so then we just started talking about the possibility of me coming up here for a few weeks and help, helping with the production of, uh, of this album. So that's basically it, you know. It's a very new relationship, but it instantly I felt uh, very close musically to uh, Al and Jazz because we just love a lot of the same things, most of the same things, music from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, you know, so that's what I'm all about. I mean, I cover all of those eras, you know, all those decades, so it, it really is a, a very easy fit, you know, there was no getting used to each other, really, it was just, okay, let's play something, and, you know, it was cool. Yeah. When I first started playing guitar, I, I started taking his lessons online. Uh, his, uh, his first Sonic Junction lessons online for so long, you know. And just and he has so much material to go through that it, you, know, you could spend you could spend a lifetime and, and still not get to, through everything that he's done or even that he teaches. But he's such a good teacher uh, online. It was just like. You know, I learned so much from that. I never would have thought that I would be sitting here recording a record with Duke Robillard in my lifetime. Uh, I come from a pretty small town in rural Alberta and 
was just interested in music and and the turn of events, you know, it just so happens that uh, uh, it brought me to this point. And then I get to meet, you know, one of my guitar legends and sit there and play music with them and trade solos with them and, you know, get to pick his brain, hear some stories. It's It's been such a wonderful experience and I feel like uh, I've learned a lot just from hanging out with them. It's like a dream come true, you know. Although I never even had the dream to begin with, you know. Like, I never even would have thought that that was a possibility. But the fact that he's into the music that we're putting down is, is, uh, is great. We have such, we have a lot of close influences that we're, we're into. I mean, everyone's got a massive amount of respect for Duke because uh, he's a great player and he's been on so many awesome records. And this guy's toured with, uh, he's, he, he, he played on Time Out of Mind, you know, like it's one of the best records of all time, I think, and Bob Dylan, you know. Um, toured with Tom Waits, you know, his own bands, his own records. He's, he's very, very, very accomplished in that world. Alan Jazz are very meticulous about demoing and rehearsing before they hit the studio uh, in the hopes that by the time they get here everyone knows what they're doing and uh, it kind of speeds up the process. They've already done the majority of the pre-production themselves uh, at home. So when we got in the studio with Duke there was a couple times everything has been laid out but he would say oh in this intro why don't you stay on this chord or maybe let's do this rhythm instead. Small changes that in the grand scheme of things actually make a huge difference. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, we had people lend us all, all kinds of rad gear. This guitar that uh, is right here um, is Stephen Nicleva's guitar. Um, just a stellar guitar player here in town. So, it's good times, man. It is sounding killer. I'm quite excited. Nothing left to bleed. There is nothing left to bleed. You know, we've kind of been building their sound together for the past 10 years that we've been working together. Um, so, you know, every new record there's always a lot of conversation saying, well, here's the records we're listening to, here's the vibe we're going for, here's the instrumentation. There's a lot of, it's a lot of communication, but when it actually comes down to getting the sounds and, and dialing in all the gear, they well, kind of leave that to me. I love this guitar, this is the one I'm talking about, dude. It's so cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 140, but when I, I got it from Duke, or from Deke Dickerson, and it was it was part of the horde that came out of R.C. Allen's. I don't know if you know who R.C. Allen was. He was no, a contemporary of Paul Bigsby. Yeah, so. It's sweet. It's certainly got a thing. Yeah, it's got a thing. It's, it does one thing, but it's a cool thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need. You guys are here. It's even shorter than a Birdland. Really? Yeah, yeah. It, it is, because yeah. I had a Birdland. Wow. I think we found the perfect note. Right there. Oh no, I'm messing it up. <laughs> now is it, is it that one here? I was listening to it going, I think, I, I, I think that's part of my lesson plan that we did at one point. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. I thought, oh man, finally someone actually learned the shit I was showing. <laughs> <laughs> and made their own shit out of it. That's all you can ever ask for as a teacher. Yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah, it is. It's a great deal.